the more successful your athletics program is, the less costly it is. Uh, I mean, and so, <clears throat> the six, and, and it's interesting, your athletics have been very successful, basketball, baseball, everything but football. And unfortunately, football is a revenue driver. Uh, I think there's an opportunity here to <clears throat> strengthen and make your football competitive. As you do that, you really need to look at getting into a, a, a stable conference and one where you're going to get more revenue from TV contracts. The, the key to long-term survival in athletics are, are the TV contracts with conferences. And so that's why conference alignment is so important right now. Uh, <clears throat> but but you, you, know, you never, uh, you have to make a little, a little investment in that program. You also need to get your community fully behind you. And I think uh, you can get this community really engaged uh, uh, in the athletics program, understanding what it can do for them. And uh, as you do, if, in growing your enrollment will help in supporting that as well. If you do those two things, I think you have a chance to be competitive and, uh, and find a good conference home. The first, first thing you want to do is to have an athletics program that is, is completely supportive with revenue it generates plus the student athletics fee. And so that would be the first goal is to work toward an athletics program that could support itself completely with the revenues it generates plus the athletics fees. And if you think about athletics revenues, they, they come from <coughs> attendance at, at games, uh, they come from in, in whatever conference revenue you have, the TV contract, the NCAA from the basketball tournament provides a little money, and then sponsorships. <coughs> and those sources of revenue uh, plus your student fees, you want to <coughs> To, to, to be, uh, to, you want that to take care of the expenses of athletics, and that's what we we work at doing. You, it's not going to happen overnight. It's something that you you put a, again a good business plan in place, and you try to get strong support from your community of making that happen. You know, it's interesting that that's probably true. I mean, we look at uh, you know, all the, the developments in online education. Although the interesting thing, you know, those. Uh, Universities that are putting out free courses, right? The MITs. <clears throat> the, what, what, what's keeping that from being truly transformative? I think is this: you can take a free course, you know, free courses from MIT, but they don't count for MIT credit. That makes sense. When, when a university won't count its own courses for credit, that's not going to transform anything. Mm -hmm. But having said that. There are a lot of things underfoot. I actually think New Mexico State is better positioned than most institutions to deal with that. And here's why. <clears throat> it's not just a university, it's a system. You have four community colleges, and those community colleges uh, working with the university can do things that you could never do really on your own. Uh, uh, you know, online education can be done not only through the, uh, New Mexico State, but, but through all of those community colleges as well. Furthermore, you can provide opportunities for a much wider range of students than you could if you had only the university. What you do have to do is get people together as a system and help them understand that there is that they are a system and that the, the strength of one is the strength of the other. And uh, I'm not I'm not sure how much previous presidents coming in have seen this as a huge advantage. Uh, let me a little bit about my background. When I was at uh, <clears throat> Missouri, Kansas City, I worked real hard to get to work with the community colleges there to get these transfer agreements to have really smooth transfer. When I got to Texas Tech, what I really wanted was a community college on campus there. And so I went to South Plains uh, Community College and, and uh, said, look, why don't you come teach courses on our campus? You can have space free. In fact, you can hire graduate students as teachers. But uh, because what I wanted to do was join admissions with them. And uh, in fact, we had a great program there that, that worked out with South Plains. I'm not sure, it's, that's something I've wanted to do for a long time. So it's important for me to get in and do this. And I see a huge advantage.